We took a zero in grants, and while we were there, we were hit with the news that all of the national forests in New Mexico would be closing sometime the following week due to drought, lack of personnel, and an unprecedented fire season. With that news, we left knowing we might have to skip all the way to Colorado by the time we got to Cuba. But since the forests weren't closed yet, we started the trek out of town in a large group. Our plan was to get to the summit of Mount Taylor for camp, so we tried to start our road walk out of town early-ish. After about five miles on pavement, we made it back to trail and immediately started climbing. We had all unfortunately underestimated how much water we needed to bring and our first source wasn't until 16 and a half miles in. It was a pretty hot day, so I tried to ration and felt surprisingly okay, but I was very thirsty by the time we arrived to the cow trough. We were greeted there by trail magic from a man who had seen us on the road, and I'm not sure if it was those beers or the thirst, but most of us ended up deciding to camp early instead of summoning that night. We sat in a circle for dinner and were in bed by 7.45 before several big days of hiking to come. Good morning from the ascent up Mount Taylor. We were gonna uh, uh, initially go up Mount Taylor and cowboy on the top, but we all kind of decided that sounded not as fun when we knew there was gonna be 30 mile per hour wind gusts. Now we have like a three and a half mile ascent up Mount Taylor. I've already done a mile and there's been like almost no gain, which scares me for there's at least 2,000 feet, so, and I think I've got like two miles left now, so it's gonna be a steep two miles. Since ancient times, Mount Taylor has been known as Sol to the Navajo people. It's the southern mountain of the four sacred mountains, in between which the homeland of the Navajo is located, and has been designated as a traditional cultural property since 2014. It was our highest point yet on the CDT, and certainly our toughest climb so far. Although it's gradual, we really hadn't climbed much at all in New Mexico, so it was quite the change of pace. I took a few wrong turns and even a nasty tumble on my way up, but was thrilled to finally reach the top. We just summited Mount Taylor, and there are some great views now. Well, the way up too, but just in general, finally some views. Kid and I stuck together for a little while on the descent, but eventually he got ahead of me, and I spent a lot of the rest of the day alone. It was mostly uninteresting walking through flat areas and spaced out pinyon pines in the middle of cow country. I'm about four miles out from the spring we stopped at for lunch. Um, I got there right after like the twerk old bag and Aladdin had left so and they wanted to do 15 more miles and I left that spring kid and I left that spring and Rosemary just before us around like 1 30 and it is almost three and I've gone 14 miles they want to go 25 for the day so that's nine more no that's 11 more <laughs> And it's 3 p.m. It's gonna be cutting it close, or we're gonna be night hiking, or we're not gonna make it all the way there. I'm about to rejoin the CDT off the Mount Taylor alternate, and then we've got a couple miles to a cow trough, which is apparently going to need to be pre filtered, so another not so great water source of New Mexico, and we have to carry that water for like 16 miles, so we'll have to carry at least four liters um, since we're gonna be dry camping too, so. That's not going to be fun. I found the CDT was humbling me more and more with each step. On the PCT, I could sleep in and still see my group around lunch. Now, especially with a need that's slowing me down, if I sleep in, I don't see anyone all day. I rely on Kid to catch them at breaks so we can still plan to camp together. He's a speedy liaison who doesn't mind falling behind again to keep me company. Add my frustrations with speed to long, exposed water carries to road walks filled with rocks that you can feel in every step, to our only real climb so far making me feel weak, to the worry that an old injury will take me off trail like it should have the first time, and I am acutely aware of the edge of my capabilities. 
I find myself asking more often than ever before, why am I out here? What am I doing? Luckily, I decided on that answer well before I even left. And that's to prove to myself that I can. Believing you can do something is one thing, but going out and doing it is an entirely different endeavor. And so every day I woke up, I packed up, and I kept going. And I decided to continue to do the same all the way to Canada. That night we found the group in a flat field. Kid and I argued a bit over where to sit up, but eventually we settled on a spot and got ready for bed. So Kid and I got into camp last night at like eight. Luckily, we thought we might be hiking till nine. My knee's been hurting, so I've been going really slow. And he was kind enough to walk with me. And, but everybody camped like a little bit earlier than we thought they would. So like a mile, a mile about. So we got there at like eight and set up, had dinner. I think I went to bed at like 9.50, which is kind of late. But after, you know, getting everything done in camp, that's just the way it shook out. And um, we woke up this morning and everybody was gone, which they told us they were gonna leave super early because we're about to enter a really dry and exposed section. And we have 10 miles to water this morning. And then after that, it's 25 miles. So the next water, which is a cache, which you're not really supposed to rely on. But after that, it's like another 15 to the next water. So that's like 40 miles of potentially no water. I think the cache is pretty reliable based on gut hook comments and the amount that's in it. But some long ass carries in this section and apparently it's gonna be really exposed. So that's why everyone wanted to get up early. I think we'll probably try and do another 25 today. If we could do 15 after this water that's in 10 and then only have 10 the next morning, it's a little easier to go on less water in the morning because it's cooler. Um, so that might be the ideal situation, we'll see. That's it, Kid and I left camp at like 6.45, everybody else left by six, so we'll see if we see them today. This road, I'm sure you can tell, is so rocky. And these shoes have damn near 500 miles on them. You can feel, it feels like you can feel every little pebble. I'm ready for my new shoes in Cuba. A hot morning turned into a hot afternoon, broken up only by a spring that was a half mile off trail. So we are doing some off trail miles to get to a spring. And you can see it. Let's see if I can get it all the way down there. Right behind me, like that little pool thing. So I'm gonna go down quite a bit, which means I'm gonna have to come up quite a bit. Drop the pack though, just carrying water bottles. The spring was a nice break and after some time there I felt ready to take on the rest of the day. By continuing my suffering I was rewarded with some incredible views. Just two miles before our last water source we began a steep descent that offered sweeping views of mesas and mountains far into the distance. Lizards scurry away from my steps as I trip down the trail distracted by the landscape. I didn't care as much about catching the group or getting to water as I drink in all the wilderness had to offer. When I did eventually make it to our last cow trough, I got official news that the National Forest would be closing on Thursday, but it was offset by news that we might be camping a little bit early, if we could find the mesa that Aladdin had camped at on his CDT through hike. We did find the mesa and it was absolutely spectacular. It was one of the best cowboy spots I've ever had, and we spent the evening on a cliff watching the sunset over the desert. It was the kind of setting you see in movies about people who abandon conventional ways of living to go exist in the wilderness, and it was our reality. It was my 27th birthday, and when I proposed the idea of hiking 27 miles to celebrate, this wonderful group of humans agreed. We awoke before the sun and began a long day of walking through the desert. 
it's my birthday today and we decided to do 27 miles for my 27th birthday and so we got up at well almost everybody left camp at 5 kid and Pib and I left at 5 30. The scenery was incredible. We skirted mesas with otherworldly rock formations and witnessed the array of colors that is present in desert rock. Unfortunately, the night before, Kid ripped a chunk of his skin off via Luca tape, and he ended up having to hitch in from the water cache we got to just 11 miles into our day. I continued on with the rest of the group, hoping that his foot would heal quickly. After the cache, the group went another eight miles, and I finally caught them at lunch a small miracle only made possible by their need to escape the heat. After that, it ended up being more like nine miles to camp instead of the eight we had hoped, but we made it to water and another good cowboy spot, and I felt surprisingly good. I felt strong and happy to be celebrating another year of my life on a long trail somewhere in the backcountry of New Mexico, surrounded by wonderful people, even if I couldn't quite keep up. So I did 27 miles for my 27th birthday yesterday and the whole trail fam did it with me. It's very sweet of them. Uh, kid had to hitch into town because he accidentally ripped his blister off with Luca tape, which sucked, but it's all good. Uh, we camped last night just back there somewhere. Um, it was a really pretty hike all day yesterday. There were lots of beautiful views. Um, kind of stinks that we heard the national forests in New Mexico are closing uh, preventatively for fires. They just don't have enough personnel because unfortunately they're understaffed and underpaid. Uh, the firefighters are, so they're closing the national forests preemptively. Um, there are some fires, but they're just closing everything. Um, so we're going to have to miss 150 miles of New Mexico. We're not quite exactly sure what the plan is yet. We're going to get to Cuba take a few days off and then see where in Colorado we can go up to, depending on snow. It's still like mid to late May, so uh, it'll be, we'll have to see um, how much time we need to take off if we need to let the snow melt. And yeah, yesterday was really pretty. And so it's nice that this was our last section of New Mexico. At least it was a pretty one. There haven't been many, so. I heard it gets prettier up ahead, but I guess we won't know for a while. So yeah, it was a good birthday though. We had about 10 miles until the highway into town and one short but steep climb up a mesa. The top offered incredible views and the lure of town put a pep in my step. When I got to the road, I stuck out my thumb for whatever came my way and actually ended up getting picked up by an ambulance. Definitely my coolest and potentially most nervous hitch yet. I half expected them to hand me a bill when they dropped me off in the McDonald's parking lot. The rest of the crew was waiting for me there, and we celebrated my birthday that evening in a gazebo outside our motel. We spent the next day making our way to Santa Fe via New Mexico's surprisingly extensive public transportation system. Our plan was to take about a week off while we waited for at least some snow to melt in Colorado before reconvening in Chama to enter the southern San Juans. Someone in the shopping cart. 